Good afternoon and uh, thank you, Lee, for the uh, introduction. I think uh, Colleen's act will be a very hard one to follow and uh, I must admit I'm sitting here with Green with Envy listening about royalties for regions, but we won't go there on that political tack right now, but maybe it'll come up in question time. I guess from a, a North Queenslander, you'd expect us to stand up here and say, well, the North is great, we want a separate state. But uh, I won't be going down that path today, but I do hope to share with you some insights into the North and why we believe there's a, a huge amount of opportunity and why we believe uh, a little bit more attention could be uh, afforded us up North, but also to be able to deliver for the rest of the country. In terms of the North and by way of introduction of RDAs, you've heard from uh, Glenis that uh, uh, it was a government initiative a few years back to establish the Regional Development Australia committees around the country and in total there are 55 of which uh, uh, about um, uh, six of those are across the northern area covering the tropics and uh, the part that I'll focus on a little bit more is uh, about the three uh, RDA regions in the north of the uh, Queensland state. Now, in, in terms of the tropics and looking right across the northern and the great focus that uh, the department has at the moment on Office of Northern Australia and everything north, um, that area accounts for about 3 million square kilometres, is roughly 40% of Australia's land mass, or on international terms, is equivalent to much of the Southeast Asia region right to the north of us. The world's tropical zone is significant in many aspects. 40% of the world's population live in the tropics, 80% of the world's biodiversity is in the tropics, and 20% of the current world gross product is generated in the tropics, with significant growth ahead. So as Professor Sandra Harding, the Vice-Chancellor of James Cook University, strongly advocates, many of the world's most significant issues, such as health, environment, economic development, development of governance and judicial structures, education and increasing expectations of the growing middle class all play out in the tropical zone around the equator and around our part of the world. Northern Australia is a significant player in the world's tropical zone and has opportunities to develop collaborative partnerships to export not only products and services, but also know-how, whether that be through aid programs or through commercial opportunities that will ever be increasing. Uh, in terms of tropical northeast Australia, if we call it that in the terms of the northeast today, uh, roughly about 826,000 square kilo uh, kilometre area. So once again, a very vast area, accounting for 48% of Queensland, or in national terms, 11%. It's a very diverse region. If we look at it in aggregate across uh, my RDA region and neighbouring RDA regions, where several sectors hold more than 5% uh, of the uh, employment in the region, such as retail, health and assistance services, construction, public administration and safety, obviously on the back of strong government and defence presence, um, accommodation and food sector driven by tourism in the area, very strong education presence with having our own regionally based university at JCU, the mining sector of course, and importantly for many people here today, agriculture, which equates to about 5.2% of our regional employment, that is about 16,000 people. The agricultural sector in our region, uh, very strong as you've heard today about the beef industry, um, Luke and others were presenting on that earlier today, uh, certainly in terms of um, uh, cropping, there's uh, large fruit production, there's large vegetable production, and of course one of our biggest crops continues to be a strong export earner for us, and that's the sugar industry, with approximately 85% of our sugar going overseas. Of course, on top of that, there's other lifestyle horticulture and cut flowers. So it's a very significant and diverse agricultural and grazing sector that we have. However, when painting the picture of our region, and I think this goes back to Glenys's point before about looking at the evidence behind any of the business cases we develop for our region, one has to look further than the aggregate of a region. Uh, we find even though at the high level our region is very diverse, it is also uh, very different from one part to the other. You can't aggregate and average out data in a lot of cases. So for a couple of points like that, for example, we talk about population, uh, it's about 818,000 across the northern Queensland region, will be over 1 million by 2030. So while that um, approximate you know, density is about one person every kilometre, we have cities like Townsville, 185,000 people, but we have entire shires with just 270, uh, 267 people in Mapoon, for example. So great diversity and spread and density of population. Similarly, if we're also looking at unemployment, a very critical factor when looking at economic development in our region and others, uh, we have areas with 0.6% 
unemployment in McKinlay Shire. Now, our chair and uh, the mayor out there could name every five of those. He knows the people who are unemployed. Uh, but in the rest of the region, we've got very um, varied statistics. We have one part of the region uh, to the south of us, which has uh, Wurrabinda Shire, has 71.5% unemployment. So once again, a 6.1% average will not give you the picture of what the regional situation really is. Similarly, on education levels, when you're looking at schooling or whether you're looking at post-schooling, if you look at that when we're looking at future labour force development, we have areas with only 8.2% uh, achievement of uh, grade 11 or 12, whereas that is, of course, much higher in some of the better privileged city areas. Uh, the same with um, post-secondary education. So as, I can, as you can see from those statistics, one of the important messages I'd like to leave with you, with people who work in research, look at our future policies, look at our future investment in regional areas. There's a lot of digging below the surface to get to the real picture uh, within a region. In terms of our strengths uh, in the north, uh, we certainly um, believe that one of those significant strengths is water. And obviously there's a lot of it and too much of it around in Australia at the moment. But this is, um, just as an example, uh, this is the Burdekin Dam, which was one of the big infrastructure projects of the 80s in Queensland. Its area and capacity is 1.86 megalitres, roughly equivalent to four Sydney harbours. When it floods, Sydney harbours flow over that spillway every day. Uh, it's significant in being able to open up over 103,000 he 103, hectares of farming land that survives on that water. Uh, it um, helps support the sugar industry, vegetables, cotton and rice, for example. In the area, we have significant rainfall. Uh, obviously, being in the tropics, you would expect that with a variety of different um, uh, Agri um, agricultural lands and climates across the region. We have everything from shires with about 1,200 to other shires with 9.6 metres of average rainfall. So very significant figures in terms of, of rainfall. In terms of uh, other advantages for our region being in the tropical zone in the north, obviously the climate that goes with that, the fertile lands that go with that, but also very significantly for the whole of the north, as was mentioned in the beef strategy discussions this morning, is our proximity to our major markets. So for example, to be able to access international markets from the north of Australia and save several um, days of shipping, to save uh, several thousands of dollars of fuel costs and other costs, uh, you know, there is a great advantage in getting to market quickly and efficiently and effectively. So for example, we're blessed with ports in uh, Townsville, Corumba, Cairns and Abbott Point and others in the region. Uh, it's also, uh, I guess, uh, one of the things that might not be as well known, of course, is that uh, in the north, uh, NBN rollout is occurring uh, in a very significant way. And uh, Townsville is one of the first release sites in Australia, um, one of the first five in Australia after Tasmania. And uh, it's now on second release and quickly moving into a mass release. So we also believe in the north we've got an opportunity not only to capture the opportunities associated with high-speed broadband, but also to play a leading role there in working with our neighbours around the north to capture those opportunities, and I'll come to that further. Of course, we also pride ourselves on a great lifestyle, as everyone from everywhere in Australia would say they love their local area, they love their, their lifestyle, and that's a very loud message when we go out as RDA and, con and consult in our communities. Everyone wants to passionately protect the lifestyle they have and continue to improve on it. And of course, with that goes a great asset for tourism, whether you be in the outback, out the ISA and doing the mine tours, or whether you're on the Great Barrier Reef doing the dive tours. We're very well blessed with that. In terms of going forward, we have a lot of challenges though, and I won't be shy of those. Uh, certainly in terms of, I mentioned before, education skills, that's a significant area for us. We need to be getting more of our kids into school and better education levels achieved so that we're competitive in the future. Along with that goes the opportunity and the need to be able to better engage in Indigenous communities for raising uh, school attendance, education opportunities and beyond that, job opportunities. And that's where we want to partner with the government in closing the gap programs and the private sector to see how we can try to really get some of the, those programs leapfrogging, leapfrogging and getting some significant runs on the board. In terms of uh, that, um, the other challenge, mining industry is huge in our region, and I'll come to that a bit more, but in terms of that one figure that's floating around is that we need another 35,000 workers in the next decade. 
Where they're going to come from, one would suspect the agricultural sector is actually in very strong competition. The agricultural sector in our region, and I'm sure this is similar in others, is already facing ageing workforce, uh, children and, and youth leaving the farms, not following on from their families and parents and generations before them. And uh, so we have got some real challenges there in addressing workforce for the whole community, and in particular, I would say, agriculture. One of our most significant challenges, though, is one of our biggest assets, and that's water. And here you can see a picture which we see all too often, and that is of closure of the Bruce Highway. Um, I've just put a few words up there. I've tried to restrain myself from putting too many words on slides, but I did want to quote the RACQ and the figures that you, you just don't know I've made them up. Uh, the, uh, the Bruce Highway, as uh, reported here by the RACQ, in a short period of time was closed 530 times. 530 times between Brisbane and Cairns. It is a national highway, it is an economic piece of infrastructure in our country, and yet it is subject to that many closures in that short period of time. It is, as RACQ have said, a national, I'll add the word national, an embarrassment. And it certainly wouldn't be tolerated in other parts of the country. So we do have some big infrastructure needs, and I would argue that the transport situation, while we are uh, we're not doing too badly in some areas, one of our biggest challenges, I believe, is getting our infrastructure to the right productive level it needs to be. I think if we have the debate nationally, as we have been recently, on productivity and the need for productivity gains right across the board, infrastructure in transport would have to be right near the top of that. And uh, there are certainly areas where we could be saving our industry's time and costs by fixing that transport infrastructure. Other areas that also need attention, I believe, in our area, up the northern area, apart from the coastal roads, uh, other than the in inland highways, and certainly the rail infrastructure. And I'll talk more about the Mount Isa to Townsville Corridor shortly. I've also mentioned telecommunications and the opportunity arising from the National Broadband Network and access to high-speed broadband. I would say in that regard, it's an opportunity. It's always also associated for us with challenge. And I guess we'll take the politics out of it. We've got the attitude up north, we're getting it, go for it, take it, use it, regardless of what may happen in the future. We know there's often political debate. We try to take that out of our equation and say, how can we benefit from that? Our biggest challenge is also making sure we don't have a digital divide. We are concerned on two fronts. One is that the, the broadband rollout plan is about fibre to cities and some regional areas, but it's about fixed wireless and satellite to other areas. Many of you in the room, I think, may actually be lining up for satellite or, or fixed wireless. Now, that's great. The, the new rollout will actually ensure everyone will get better speeds and access and data capability than everyone has at present. But what we are worried about is all the um, smart technologies that are being designed for telemedicine, telehealth um, generally, uh, also for education delivery, is being designed around fibre optic speeds of 100 up, uh, sorry, 100 down and 20 to 50 up uh, speed in terms of megabits per second. That's great if you're doing fibre to fibre connectivity. But if you happen to be at the end of the satellite or a wireless solution, our concern uh, hasn't been proven yet, but our concern is that some of these solutions will not be fixing the tyranny of distance of what the high-speed broadband should be able to deliver. So in that space, our RDA and others are very actively uh, working in communities to see how we can get the best solution possible. How can we get people onto fibre optic rather than having to take a second or third rate solution? We understand the economics. You can't put fibre optic down every laneway in Australia, but the very ones who will benefit the most from high-speed broadband will be those who are most remote, um, a thousand kilometres from a service delivery point of a government agency, for example. So we see that as one of the major challenges. The other challenge is the digital divide from the perspective of socio-economic status, education levels, and potentially <coughs> a lack of leadership in the local community. We recognise that there are issues there about um, sign up to even current internet and, and uh, uh, solutions for um, to, um, accessing, uh, sorry, telecommunication solutions for accessing um, the internet.